Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about the standard version of the Galaxy Note 10. A couple of weeks ago Samsung announced two versions of the Note, right? There's the standard Note and the Note 10 Plus. And I feel like the Note 10, for some reason, feels like a downgrade if you've owned a Note device in the past and you decide to upgrade to it. Yes, it's a little bit smaller, but it lacks some of the main benefits that we've liked and we've used specifically on Note line devices for a long time. This is TK. Let's go ahead and talk about the Galaxy Note 10 and who is this device for. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified whenever we have new videos on the channel. The Galaxy Note 10 definitely has a lot of the latest specifications that we look for in 2019. We have the Snapdragon 855, we have an updated camera array in the back, we have a wide angle lens, a standard focal length and a telephoto lens, and of course the dual tone LED flash. Now we do not have the depth sensor that is available on the Note 10 Plus, uh, but that's again a little bit different, no big deal. They did the exact same thing with the S10 and the S10 Plus. They added an additional camera, although not on the back, they added on the front for the secondary camera on the front there. Uh, now again, keep in mind there's always going to be a difference between a standard line of a device and the plus line is always going to be there. Uh, but what they didn't do here essentially is they also removed the three and a half millimeter headphone jack on both devices. So that's the first thing that we lost. Any Note device that's ever come before, we've always had a headphone jack. So no headphone jack here, nothing here. There's not even an actual adapter in the box to be able to use your own headphones. So what you can use here is essentially you have the USB-C to USB-C cable that's supposed to be used with the USB-C charger here. This is the 25 watt charger that enables us to charge our device a lot faster than the standard 15 watt chargers that we've had in the past with devices from Samsung. Uh, we have of course the OTG connector here as well as uh, the tip remover and replacement pieces for our S Pen. And last but not least, a USB-C style AKG tune headphones uh, that you're able to use with your device, but again, no adapter in the box. Which means if you wanna use any kind of headphones with this, you for the most part are going to either have to rely on the Samsung Buds, which you can actually charge since we now have wireless reverse charging here. And you can also use them since Bluetooth is obviously gonna be a much more um, future-proof uh, methodology of connecting to our device for music. But again, productivity, external audio, that's gonna be providing us some challenges now as you need to find microphones that are USB-C enabled that directly connect to your phone to provide you the better audio if you wanna use external audio. Now, one of the other aesthetical differences between the S Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus is the fact that the display that we have here is a 1080p or a full HD plus display as opposed to what we have on the Note 10 Plus and that one is a quad HD. The S10 and the S10 Plus both have Quad HD displays. It's the S10e that didn't have that. So are we saying that basically the Note 10 is more comparable to the S10e is to the S10 Plus, as opposed to what we have, we expect to actually have it as the S10 to the S10 Plus, as opposed to just having here basically a 1080p display. We lost the headphone jack. We don't have expandable storage. We also don't have support for the faster uh, charging that you can do with the Note 10 Plus. That's another thing. The Note 10 Plus does support faster charging. It doesn't include it in the box, so you don't have a way of using it with the faster charger, but you definitely need to be able to use that. So the faster charger is the one that you're able to use, the 45 watt um, power delivery charger. We'll go ahead and say cancel for now. Uh, and we can't even use that here. We have the single camera, the full display, minimal, minimal bezels. Of course, we have the side launcher that we normally see here on Note devices. Uh, this is a very fast device. I'm not knocking it down. The display is absolutely beautiful. There's no question that this is gonna be a very good, very strong and very good performer. Now, so first thing we're talking about here is we have a 6.3 inch display compared to what we have the 6.8 inch QHD display. This is a basically a full HD display. Let's go ahead and power on the display. Um, and again, we noticed that the power buttons are on the left. That's another aesthetical difference that they did from last year's Note or even the S-Line. There's no more power button on the right and this is actually not a power button. This is mostly just a sleep and awake button to allow you to turn off and turn on the display. If you want to shut it down, you have to go into the settings and actually go in and change the option from here as the new version of One UI does not actually support a power button on the right side. You notice it's entirely clean. No SD card on the Note 10, although the Note 10 Plus does support it. Of course, some of the microphones and the earpiece, there's a secondary earpiece in there. Uh, the front facing camera is a 10 megapixel camera that is capable of providing us some of the best images in there as well as video. Uh, supposed to be 4K up to 30 frames per second. On the left side, we have basically what we consider to be a sleep and awake button as well as a Bixby button, because that's what they kept. They didn't keep the power button, they kept the Bixby button but they kind of masked it in a little bit so that it doesn't actually initiate Bixby unless you press and hold it longer. So if I press and hold it a little bit longer, guess what, Bixby is still here. Again, the decision to keep Bixby over the power button is an interesting question and why would they do that other than to try to make people use Bixby, which I think people will still try to remap this button. We have a volume rocker up and down that enables us to basically control volume, some of the antenna bands, 
On the bottom, we have the S Pen. Of course, this is the updated S Pen with some of the new functionalities, and we'll get a chance to explain to you guys what they are. Um, it definitely is a uh, feel looks really nice, and it definitely has uh, more functionality than your standard S Pens. And of course, uh, the gestures that I showed you guys in that other video that we did. A bottom firing speaker that's married with the top earpiece to provide a stereo speakers, a USB-C now that is considered to be data, charge, as well as audio, and of course, the bottom firing, well, the bottom microphone. Um, on the cameras in the back, we have basically a triple camera setup, a 16 megapixel ultra wide, a 12 megapixel, basically just your standard uh, wide angle, and of course, a telephoto at uh, 12 megapixels. Uh, the battery in here is a 3500 milliamp battery compared to the 4300 milliamp battery on the Note 10 Plus. Again, a much bigger difference there. We have wireless charging, of course, and reverse wireless charging. Uh, it is IP68 rated, and of course, the in-display fingerprint sensor, let's go ahead and turn it off, uh, that is present at the bottom, and you do need to configure that. And it is supposed to be a much better, much faster one than what we saw with the S10 Plus. Now, just for size comparison, I wanna share with you guys real quick. This is the S10 Plus, and this is the Note 10. Uh, you'll notice as far as footprint, they're not really holding that much more or that much less. Um, although we are all looking at a slightly smaller display, and this is actually a little bit thinner. So you can see right there, uh, the actual S10 Plus is a slightly wider of a device. And I think that's mostly because of the way the display is done. And this is definitely a lot more sharper as well as more boxy. So you can definitely see that this is pretty much a rectangle here. Now, I don't wanna make it sound like I'm really harping on the Note 10 and making it sound like it's a bad device. The Note 10 actually has a lot of good things going on for it. Uh, one of the first things obviously is the fact that this device starts at 256 gigs of internal storage, which may not make us very reliant on the fact that we don't have basically an SD card slot here. Although keep in mind that the Note 10 Plus does have that and you can go all the way up to one terabyte. Um, we do have UFS 3.0 here, so the storage in here is definitely very fast and should make it very easy for us to be able to basically store, play videos, record videos, and accessing this information should always be very, very nice. Uh, we have digital well-being apps, all of that stuff is just basically here, software update, of course. Now going over on the about uh, tab, uh, this is the SMN97OU1. This is the Unlock Note 10. This is not a carrier version of it. Uh, now this is a, running the Snapdragon 855 and in the US is a single SIM supporting device. Meaning we don't get tool SIM and we also don't, don't get SD card support. So you get this device, single SIM, and pretty much that's what you have. On the software, we start off with One UI version 1.5 on Android 9.0. And of course, uh, we should be able to get you know continuous updates and hopefully Android Q in the near future. And then lo and behold, there is a software update that is being pushed out right now and it will bring up our security patch level up to August 1st, which is pretty nice since that's where we are. And it runs about 370 megabytes. So I'll let this one run in the background. Um, overall, what we have here, some of the main benefits, of course, is the fact that we have that beautiful display. This is a 1080p display. Uh, now, the S Pen did gain a lot of functionalities over just being able to just initiate pictures. So what it says here is basically air gestures, the ability of basically looking at pictures and swiping. So you can press and then basically swipe and do the different gestures. So we're going to say try it out now. So try some gestures right there. So now it says hold the button and flick. Go a little bit slower. Great job. And now it's basically teaching us how to use them. Uh, we'll go ahead and say OK. And uh, you can actually, if you press and hold the button when you're in any display, any screen, you should be able to see all the fun functionalities that you're able to do here. You notice right there, I pressed it, it opened up the camera. I'm going to go ahead and say, basically, it tells us right there. And again, you can basically swipe and then go between all the different functionalities. Now, why would you do this when you're so close to the phone that you can actually just do this one and then go faster, swipe between the different displays and do that? This is more in case, let's say the phone is further away from you and you basically wanna be able to use it. And then of course, so here, let's go, let's swipe up. And we can go between the different screens and of course get all the different functionalities there. I mean, there's a lot more things that you can do with it. Uh, if we click it here and we scroll down, we do have the new AR doodles. We have to translate, the pen up, um, add app shortcuts. Of course, live messages are still supported here. Screen write, which gives us the ability to basically take in a picture of the screen. We'll go ahead and say allow. And then of course, uh, we can start annotated. So, you know, and then of course, when we're done, we can just basically save it or share it. Uh, we have the ability of basically creating notes, view all notes, smart select, of course. We have the selection tool that gives us the ability of basically just doing a very smart, very specific selection tool. And then we can also basically share this specifically and really works great in video. Let's say you're watching a video, you can pause it and take a really good picture there. Now the update is ready to install. I'm just gonna hit stop here. Uh, last but not least is, of course, as I mentioned to you guys, we have the AR doodles and the translate. I did a separate video showcasing some of the main benefits and the new features of the new S Pen. So definitely very exciting to see some of these things. Now, as far as a quick demo of how the audio sounds on this device, uh, again, we do have that earpiece that's sitting all the way ever so kind of nicely tucked in right above the camera. And of course, the audio is going to sound pretty good. Let's go ahead and play this NCS Jumbo by Alex Grindo. This is a non-copyrighted song.
So you can definitely see there that we have gesture control, of course, for volume up, volume down, as well as start and stop music, especially when we're playing videos in YouTube. Starting off with the front facing camera, we're able to go all the way up to 4K at 30 frames per second. And this will be the same thing for both the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus. The Note 10 Plus does not gain a secondary camera on the front. It does actually gain a depth of field or a, basically a time of flight sensor that's sitting on the back to complement the three cameras that we have there. Let's go ahead and switch over to the back. Keep in mind that on the back sensors, we're able to go all the way to 60 frames. We're here, we're capped at 30 frames per second at 4K. Went ahead and switched over to the back facing sensor. And one of the really cool things about this here is that we do have the ability of actually recording 4k at 60 frames per second now it does also have that steady shot ability of basically normalizing and stabilizing footage unfortunately that drops us down from 4k to 1080p so we'll turn that on in the next clip but for right now this is basically what it would look like let's say if you wanted to record a 4k 60 frames per second clip and if we decide to turn on the steady shot which enables us to basically normalize and basically make the video so so stabilized again i'm holding this by hand and you shouldn't even be able to tell that if i'm not using basically a gimbal or anything but the really cool feature here is that we're actually able to jump between two different cameras and go with the wide angle lens like this and of course the ability of switching over to the wide angle lens gives us the ability of having just so much more and of course having it stabilized that's even much much better of an experience now keep in mind you're not at 4k but again stabilized 1080p footage with the wide angle lens or standard focal length lens is definitely going to be really good i'm also wondering to see basically how the audio is going to perform here last time i used this i was in the middle of the unpacked event it was very loud and very noisy and i wasn't really able to see that audio zooming functionality that they were talking about and that was the ability of for us to basically get a zooming audio experience whenever we zoom in on our subject so the last thing i want to share with you guys real quick is some of the main differences between the note 9 this is last year's note device that we've had and basically has been definitely a great performer for a lot of people and what we have now with the note 10 so if you have the note 9 from last year would you even consider going to the note 10 so start off basically we have a 6.4 inch display now yes this display is definitely a little bit bigger but we definitely have bezels here on the top and bottom we don't have them here so if you really compare them there's a good chance that you'll probably say that you can't really even see the difference in display but again 6.4 to 6.3 qhd display to 1080p plus display uh, we do have here two sensors in the back we have now three sensors in the back the fingerprint sensor has been moved into the into the display and that's something that has basically been really great with the s-line of devices uh, we start off at eight gigs of ram here as opposed to where we had eight gigs of ram was the highest one we'll go ahead and dismiss and of course, what we have here as far as the battery is a 4,000 milliamp battery as opposed to the 3,500 milliamp battery. So we lost the battery capacity. We have a slightly bigger display. We have a lower resolution display, which should give us a much longer battery life. But as far as the actual connectivity and what we also have here, we still have the power button on the right side. We have the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. We still have that basically S Pen, a beautiful S Pen that we have here. Now, again, the S Pen on the Note 9 is not essentially going to give the same benefits as the Note 10, as we only have the ability of initiating pictures and video. We don't have the ability of doing gestures with it or even some of those AR doodles. Uh, the front facing camera is one piece we do have stereo speakers and as i mentioned again definitely a much more solid uh, basically device it is a lot bigger if you consider the fact that this is basically slightly smaller so we can definitely say that both of these devices are basically an evolutionary upgrade but if you're going from something like the note 9 the note 8 even the note 7 fan edition it's a hard sell to say you should downgrade in size especially if you've been comfortable using this device to something in this size and this performance although you're getting great aesthetics as far as the display looks amazing uh, we did lose the button on the right side. We now have a Bixby button that's sitting on the left side that basically acts as a wake and put to sleep. Uh, power button is sitting at the top. That's something more of a UI update that's, again, depending on how you want to use it. Uh, but as far as the actual device itself and functionality, it's an evolutionary step. We have the 845 here to the 855. Uh, basically, if you did have the 8 gig RAM version of this, you probably were already there. You did have basically a micro SD slot here with the ability of having IP68. Here we have a single slot, with uh, SIM slot without SD card on the Note 10. The Note 10 Plus is where all of that is. So if you're considering trying to go into a Note line of device in 2019 and you're coming from, let's say, the Note 9, Note 8, and Note 10, and Note 7, a fan edition, or even any earlier version of the notes especially notes that have had qhd displays and of course the headphone jack the micro sd slot in there as well as the ip rating i would definitely recommend you looking into the note 10 plus so what i'm basically saying today is not that the note 10 is not a great phone but it looks like the Note 10 is really intended for somebody that's wanted to get a Note line of device to, before to get the S Pen functionalities, but I've always thought that the Note line of devices were always too big. 
6.3 inches is actually smaller than the S10 Plus, so if you're considering getting into a device like that, you're actually going to get a slightly smaller device that gets you the S Pen, that gets you the functionality of the Note, as well as the ability of having a great display. Although is a 1080p Plus display, but it complements the smaller battery, so keep that in mind. The bigger battery will work much better when you have the QHD display, as that's much more of a power draw, as opposed to a 1080p panel on a display like this, or on a device like this. Uh, now, as far as the 90 hertz or 120 hertz, why did they not go higher? Keep in mind, Note line of devices have to have the Wacom display in there to be able to actually have sensitivity for the S Pen to function on it. And that's something that makes it a very unique display that most other devices don't consider, or at least don't need to have because they don't need to worry about S Pens. Note line of devices need that. So that's going to probably slow us a little bit before we can start seeing higher refresh rates, specifically on the Note line. It may come to the S line a lot faster than the Note line since they don't need to have the S Pen. Um, overall, the Note 10 is definitely a very good contender. It has fast charging, not the fastest that they offer, but it also has basically the new faster charging, the 25 watt charger in the box. Um, it definitely has more than enough storage, more than enough RAM, more than enough capable cameras to give us basically some of the best video and some of the best audio that we can get there. I'm a little bit bummed that we don't have a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. We don't even have an adapter to use it. So that makes it basically where we have to go out and hunt for a good adapter that will work with our Note 10 or Note 10 Plus and give us the basically the ability of using external audio like the, the other equipment that we've had on our other Note devices or even other S line of devices as the S10 line of devices in 2019 still had that three and a half millimeter headphone jack. So. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you considering getting the Note 10 or the Note 10 Plus? And if you've owned a Note line of devices before, does this device, the Note 10, even make sense? Because I feel like the Note 10 Plus is where they kind of have a slotted go into, but they offered this for people that wanted to get into the Note line of devices, but just didn't want the big Note phone and all the big size that comes with that. So like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support and I will see you guys in the next video. And again, my Note 10 Plus is coming next week, unfortunately slightly delayed from T-Mobile. So I'm very happy to at least have my Samsung pre-order that came in with the Note 10. I'll see you guys soon.